Hi, my name is Roger and welcome. In my last video I showed you a little bit of how to set up a mix bus and why you should mix through a mix bus. In this video I want to show you how I do it, what's in my template, my workflow. It's a little bit more advanced, a little bit more technical, so if you want to know the basics you might want to see the first video first. I have a song set up here. It's the Roger That Song of 2021. And I will check my levels. The only thing I did before this is I mixed the drums, bass and vocals a little bit because I thought that they were the most important instruments in this mix. The instruments that have the most energy. So I wanted to mix them a little bit with EQ and compression and reverb just to get my levels right because now I want to check my levels and I want my levels to be below minus 15 LUFS. LUFS is the average volume of the song. Of course I will check if the peaks are too loud or not, but my concentration is on the LUFS. I prefer it to be minus 18, minus 20 decibels, somewhere in that area, because I know from experience that my mixes are only going to get louder. No problem, the peaks are fine, minus 19-ish LUFS. By the way, this meter, Ju Julien loudness meter, it's free. It's a free plugin, I will link it in the description. You can buy the pro version as well and then you have default setting if you want to check volumes for Spotify, YouTube, Tidal, Apple Music and so on. I use the free version, I love it. It's really, really good. I will leave my meter on and we will go through what I have on my mix bus as a default. The first plugin I have is what I call a corrective EQ. This is where I can adjust if there's build up in the mix. It could be because of the recording room, the microphones, the preamps, the converters, whatever. It could be a lot of things. And sometimes there are, sometimes there's not. In this case, I didn't do much. All I did was I high passed at 30 hertz, because below 30 hertz there's no music, and I dipped a tiny little bit, 0.6 dBs at around 600 hertz, this frequency. Because I thought I heard a little bit of build up there, especially in the guitar and roads. So I dipped that a little bit to have a starting point for my mix. The next plugin is what I call an enhancer EQ. This is a Pultec EQ. I boosted a little bit of highs at 12k, a little bit of low at 30, and also attenuated a little bit. How much I boost high and low depends on the song, of course. This is a pretty normal starting point for me. Let's listen with and without. First without and then I will put it in. The mix opens up in a nice way in my opinion and I don't have to boost treble or bass on each individual track. That's why I'm using this one. The next plugin is a compressor that doesn't compress. I use this Fairchild compressor because of the transformer tube and the kilometers of cabling that goes into this product. That sound. The transformer sound really tightens up the bass without losing the bass frequencies, which I really like. And mostly I don't use a Fairchild compressor for compression, because I don't like how a fascial compressor compresses. It's like an old car, an old Chevy that drinks a lot of gasoline or something that's very slow and old and big and clumsy. If I want a clumsy compressor, I'll reach for that, but normally not. This is gonna be subtle, first without and then with.
I can hear it in my headphones. I'm not sure you can hear it with the YouTube compression at all, but it tightens up the bass in a good way, I think. The next compressor actually compresses. This is the Shadow Hills Mastering Compressor, and I use both the optical compressor and the discrete compressor on this. Normally, it's one or the other, but on this song, both worked. On the discrete compressor I have the slowest attack, the fastest released and the lowest ratio on the steel setting. And I don't want to compress more than one, maybe two dBs on this compressor. Not more. Preferably one dB. This is just to get, get my mix a little resistance so it, it pushes against something when I'm mixing. So let's listen to it, how it sounds. Is that I don't know enough at all Everywhere I go was... It tightens up the sound a little bit, which I like. On this mix I also use one other plugin and that is the Studer A800 from Universal Audio just to smoothen out the transients a little bit. This is also going to be subtle, but think of it like this. It's a piece of wood and you just use sandpaper on the edges of the wood. The, that is what, what this is doing. We have set up a mix bus. In my template, I have one other plugin that I might use. That is the black box distortion unit for some harmonics or distortion on the overall mix. On this song, I didn't think I needed it, so it's off. Sometimes I also change plugins, especially the compressor. If I want something harder, I will go for a VCA compressor like an SSL, softer, maybe a Fairchild, but probably a Neve style compressor. So we have made some resistance for our tracks when we're mixing. We have an EQ, we have a compressor, something to push on, push to, push for when mixing. But I want some gravity as well. And gravity I will do with some parallel compression. And I have two parallel buses set up on my template. And that is one for the drums and bass only. And this I use uh, 1176 style compressor. This is from Plugin Alliance Purple Audio MC77 because it has a high pass sidechain filter. So it doesn't look at the bass when it compresses, which is good for bass and drums. I'm not shy with this compressor. Soloed up, it sounds like this. And now comes the tricky part, because I want to blend that in to the other tracks. So I will start with the fader low, and when I hear it, then I will back it off a little bit. So I only feel it. So let's do that. This compressor fills in the gaps between the hits of the drums and the bass and also sort of glues the bass and drums together a little bit. I have another compressor for all the other instruments, including vocal. And this compressor, I want to breathe with the vocal. I'm listening mostly to the vocal when I'm adjusting this compressor because I want the vocal to be compressed, but not the rest so much. Let's listen to it in solo. The only thing I know is that I don't know enough at all everywhere. That means that when the vocal has a pause, the compressor will let other instruments through. So now we'll blend that compressor in as well.
I use this mix bus so I don't have to do so much on every single track. I posted my last video on Facebook and there was a discussion, why should you use a mix bus? It's just a waste of energy. No, it's not. If you set up a mix bus correctly, you gain energy because you don't have to do so much on every single track. Why don't you subscribe? Uh, thank you. Let's listen without the mix bus processing and then with it. First, without. The only thing I know is that I don't know enough at all. Everywhere I go, I will start to run before I. So that's the difference between different starting points when starting to mix. Now I can start adjusting tracks. What you have to remember when mixing through a mix bus is that all the tracks you're listening to is gonna go through that mix bus. If it's the whole mix or if you are in solo. So I recommend you to mix mostly with all faders up, all things going. If you want to solve the problem on a track or maybe adjust the reverb tail in detail, of course you should solo so you can hear what you're doing. But try not to use the solo button so often. You will get a better mix and you will get a faster mix. I promise you. I have a few other plugins on my mix bus, but they are only there if I want to do a rough mix, a quick mastering on a rough mix for a client, for example. So I won't use them when mixing. When I bounce a song that I'm gonna send for mastering, I bounce with the mix bus processing on, because that is what I've been listening to all the time. That is also one reason why I don't use a limiter because if I use the limiter on my mix bus, then probably I would have to take it away so the mastering engineer have something to work with. Then I would have listened to something else that I'm sending away. I hope you found that interesting or maybe helpful. And I hope that you can find your way of working. You don't have to copy my way, but maybe some of the things I do can be inspiration for the things that you wanna do. The mix bus is on a fader in my mixer, and fader in Swedish is regel, regel. Until next time, Rotterdam.